very good morning day week and month 30 days i don't know how many of you were uh, following that 30 day thing that we came out with actually this i had brought out long back in the form of a small uh, booklet with one page committed to one uh, activity uh, when I used to go to, to rural areas and interact with students uh, and youngsters there, I thought I would like to leave them with some sort of activity, something to do, where, you know, they have some activity going on. Because I couldn't be there for very long and I couldn't have uh, continuous, uh, you know, programs with them. So I thought this would be one good uh, um, alternative, give them something to do. And that's the reason why we brought out this booklet bilingual. It was in English and in uh, Canada, so that the rural uh, uh, people, you know, they could take it. There's, as you are well aware, there's such a shortage of good uh, guidance and <clears throat> good literature and good workbooks uh, in local languages. So I thought this would be a little bit of a contribution. And that's how I'd done it. And I'd forgotten it long back. Then our uh, wonderful girls of Team Banjara came out with this bright idea that, you know, why don't we now because of this lockdown and things being <coughs> so bad, why don't we try this out and see if, um, you know, we can give this activity to people. So with minor modifications, we cut down wherever there was something about going out and, uh, you know, doing things. So many of those things they changed and uh, we made it, uh, what do you say, compatible with the uh, lockdown and we came down with this 30 days uh, activity. And I was quite amazed. I wasn't uh, optimistic at all when we started off that we will have so many people who will actually be doing these activities and reporting back. Doing the activities itself is quite uh, commendable. See, because uh, very often it so happens that we just, uh, you know, look at uh, that and say, yeah, good idea. Maybe someday I should do it. Some of us do it for a day or so and say, yeah, 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 I think I got the hang of it now. When I'm more free and when I'm ready, that time I will do something, that sort of thing. But um, amazingly, I, I found that there are a lot of people who continued to uh, do it and that was really quite thrilling and exciting for me it was quite a motivator in in fact uh, the girls are now working on something very uh, similar as they follow up uh, next month and they are going to come out with something more exciting for you people particularly from the mouth of children and this time it's not going to be text because we have come to the conclusion that we are all visual uh, or audio visual people and not uh, you know textual people so this time we are going to send, give it to you in audio visual form and uh, from the pearls of the mouths of children who have so much to uh, teach us that is just uh, a trailer of what you can expect uh, next month as of uh, now let me uh, move on to understanding this concept of uh, the 30 days, how it came about and what its uh, significance uh, um, is. Uh, please excuse me because I've got a bad uh, throat, so I may be sounding a little odd. And because of that, uh, somebody re uh, recommended that you have good whiskey and uh, your throat gets all right. But since I don't drink whiskey, someone else came out with this wonderful thing called Samaha. And it's so enriching you know it's so nice and warm to the throat i recommend it to people who want to have a nice warm throat whenever they feel that gale me kich kich as they say yes uh, nikat is there smiling at us she's the one who's looking after my throat very well last few days so it's good to have a doctor who is uh, also your student so you get uh, vip treatment from the uh, uh, doctor Okay, now 
uh, you heard of that uh, old Jackie Chan movie. It was a very uh, funny movie called Around the World in 70 Days or something like that, where they had to fly around the world and reach back within 70 uh, days. Now, if you saw that uh, uh, movie, uh, the race was on that somehow before the 70th day, they should complete that uh, round of the globe and get back. There's just one symbolism to show how when a deadline is set, if they had just said, go around the globe and uh, uh, come back, I don't know how many people would have been motivated to do it. But when there is a deadline like this you know, around the world in 70 days, they go move heaven and earth and try to see that they reach back on the 70th uh, day. The other uh, most common aspect about these deadlines is our interesting thing called exams. So we start off with exams one year away and nobody is bothered. Not a single student gives attention to the fact that, oh, I have an exam in one year. It's very interesting if you compare that with, let's say, something to do with uh, sports. If a child is told that next year you will be eligible for the juniors or seniors or some such, uh, you know, national or state level or zonal competition, and it is going to be on, let's say, 29th of May 2022. They get so enthusiastic that right now they start working towards it. But when they are told that you have a very important exam, which is going to be held on 29th of May 2022, happily everybody switches off. And then, of course, comes a time when they say three months for exam, two months for exam. And then the countdown starts 30 days for exam, 27 days, 25 days. And the students start waking up and rushing around. This year, in fact, there has been a lot of uh, trauma to the uh, students. So many students and so many parents also have told me that uh, this postponement of exams has played havoc in the mind of the uh, child. So here is a child who is told, OK, you come to 10th standard, 12th standard. You have to study. And you have to do well because this exam is going to determine so many things about your uh, future and things like that. So you start off and the children did, many children at least did a good job and put in sincere efforts. And they started this countdown saying that, OK, 40 days left for exam, 30 days left for exam. And suddenly one fine day they were told exams are postponed. New date came in and again they started preparing for it. And after a few days they were told no exams postponed again. Now, in the normal stance, a person should be happy that, yeah, I put in all my efforts, I have done my studies, and here I am, uh, you know, I'm feeling uh, uh, ready and uh, uh, fulfilled. And anyway, the exam has been postponed, so as and when it comes, I will see. But that doesn't happen. No? What actually happens is that people start, you know, cribbing that I put in so much effort and uh, yet the exam has got postponed. Now, what is that an indicator of? That's an indicator that you are doing it only for the deadline. You're not doing it for gaining knowledge. You're not doing it for any other uh, purpose. Please give a serious thought to this, that children who should have said that, yes, I, okay, even children who did not prepare very well, for whatever reason, they procrastinated. and. When they realized that exams are only 30 days, 20 days ahead, they were getting a little worked up and they were coming into some level of anxiety. And at that point, if they were told exams have been postponed, they should be happy and they should say, OK, good. I wasted my time and I didn't prepare. So now that it is postponed, I have enough time to prepare well and do very well in the exam. But they again go back to that same lethargy and that same procrastination. Saying, OK, anyway, it's got postponed, so let's see when it uh, uh, happens. Even take a simple thing, uh, talking about uh, you know, human mentality. Supposing there is a uh, announcement in that 80% uh, you know, discount or 50% discount on certain such products last three days, they say. And people go rushing. Oh, this sale is only for three days. 
every now and then some businessman comes out with that very nice alluring idea and manages to get a lot of people to buy things which they don't need but why is it because it is a human nature that i have this sale or this discounted thing only for the next 3 uh, uh, days the moment the person had said that see we have decided that we will give good better service to our customers so therefore we are cutting down on the price and from henceforth our products will be available at 20% discount believe me nobody will go and buy anyway it is available at 20% discount i'll see as and when uh, required maybe that 20% will turn to 30% discount in the days to come they look at it that way each of these uh, uh, things i've also come across as person doing career guidance the people that i want to take uh, admission in such and such a uh, coaching center or this and they say when we went there and they did the entrance test for my child and they said your child is entitled to scholarship and all those things which are many a time just sales gimmicks and they said the batch is starting so today is the last day for registration how many times I come across people who get carried away by that? Today is the last day. I tell them, today is the last day, no? Don't take admission. Call up tomorrow and say, yesterday I was very busy. I couldn't take admission. So now I suppose it is too late. You know what the answer will be, no? No, no, in your case, we'll make an exemption. You can uh, uh, apply today also. Okay. Supposing you don't apply today, you don't apply tomorrow, you wait for one week. After one week, you call them up and say, somehow the whole of last week I was busy. You had told me that the last date was one week back. So now I suppose it is over. No, no. The batch must have started and there was no question of admission, right? No, sir, we are starting another batch next week. So for that batch, you are eligible and the last date is today. How often we get carried away by these sort of things. I just wanted to help you to understand why when we put this as a 30 day uh, schedule and we say today you should do this. Today is the 7th day, 14th day, 21st day. So how you feel connected to that? The same booklet if I had just passed it on to you and said do it whenever you feel like uh, uh, doing. There are 30 different activities. If we don't say 30 days, if I don't put that label of a day, and if I say here are 30 different activities, whenever you feel like doing, do uh, keep doing one, one, one of them and tick off. And let us say when you come to a point where you complete, if not 30, let's say 20, 25 of them. Few may not be applicable to you or may not be very practical to you. So you say, OK, those I'm going to skip. But the balance, uh, uh, you know, I will complete. Try it out and see. Most of us will not do it in 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days, 70 days also. So that was the reason why we thought we will do it. And I was extremely happy that we got uh, uh, this thing done. Just uh, to have an example, let us take one uh, of uh, them which we had uh, you know, given in this. On the second uh, uh, day, what uh, I said was, that list out five blessings that you have received. This is something which you're all aware uh, of. Is it readable? Yeah. Make it bigger for those who have not uh, uh, gone through it. It said, list five blessings or boons that you have received without your having to work for them. And then ask yourself, why me for the good things? As we usually do when something bad happens to us, no? So whenever something bad happens, what do I do? I say, why me? Why should this have happened to me? But when something good happens, we celebrate, we rejoice, and we take it for granted that uh, I deserved it. But like I said, think of a blessing which you have received without your having to work for them. The list is so large if you really sit down. This was a one-day exercise on the second day, but today, I exhort you, 
uh, pull this thing back out again and start doing things like you know adding on to that list a bl big blessing to me may have been my parent my parent was so nice to me and i took my parent for granted it could have been a sibling it could have been a teacher it could have been a lesson learned on a particular day in a very subtle manner which made me rethink and which transformed my uh, uh, life it could have been a little gesture from somebody or a little gift that uh, uh, came in at the most unexpected time and lifted up my spirits and made me you know review how what i am doing and from that time onwards i started thinking in a different uh, manner so so many such things can happen so even though we gave this as a 30 day exercise and the 30th uh, 30 days are getting over this weekend i would like you to please uh, uh, you know uh, think on all these uh, uh, matters the other reason why i made you go through this uh, uh, exercise was that many of us have this tendency to keep worrying about tomorrow what will happen how will things be if this happens what will be there i don't have enough savings so many of us keep worrying about our uh, um, health i think if nothing else however horrifying and horrendous this uh, covid 19 has been it should at least wake us up to the fact that it is not just people who have good health and exercise and those uh, you know the wonderful uh, fitness things those are the ones who are going to last out longer or who are going to have good life covid has shown us that perfectly healthy people who have absolutely no complaints nothing wrong with them overnight develop uh, this thing called covid which nobody understands what it is all about and while 98 99% of the people even if uh, it becomes very bad and they have to land up in hospital or in icu they do manage to get back to normalcy that 1% or 2% just pass off without notice unlike so many other ailments where a person goes through a lot of difficulties and a lot of uh, you know pain and then the person comes to this uh, um, point here we have had cases of people just passing away so can we have that as a lesson learned that we can't even take our health for granted we can't say that i'm eating nutritious food or i'm you know keeping away from unhygienic things therefore i am uh, uh, bound to be you know doing uh, um, having good health and long life or something so instead of worrying about the future this is uh, something which i thought we could stimulate our minds and think on a daily basis what do i get out of the uh, and also remember that some of the best joys some of the best blessings are in the little things that we get on a day to day uh, basis let's have a look at another one uh, out of those 30 i just selected a few at uh, um, random take the one which was there on the ninth uh, uh, day that was the uh, that was the day when uh, i said uh, go across to an elderly person who's usually not very pleasant or friendly with a small gift or a gesture or something and make him or her sit down and talk about the good old uh, days many of us when we are young we seem to have a little bit of allergy against uh, the oldies as we uh, call them we think that they are too cranky or they are too reserved or they have a very narrow minded approach to life and they are outdated and so many such things which you know build barriers between them and uh, us that's why i brought this out saying that go to somebody and if you noticed i didn't ask you to go to somebody whom you love your favorite tata or somebody whom you have with whom you anyway have a very good relationship and you love to uh, converse with them or spend some time with them what i had asked you to do is to go to one elderly person who is usually not very pleasant or uh, um, friendly just to take an example it may be some watchman or a security guard 
sitting outside some gate yeah, in your vicinity or somewhere. Now, normally, when you even greet him, he just grunts at uh, you. The moment you do something wrong, he is immediately pointing out, saying that, no, no, don't park your car here or don't do this or whatever he has to throw his weight around. But otherwise, he never smiles, he never says anything. We don't know what his life has uh, been, right? So supposing I pick up on such a person and I'm free and just go and start off with giving him a positive stroke. Today you're looking nice or in the good weather or hope you've had a proper breakfast or whatever you feel like uh, saying. Chances are initially he will not respond or he will just grunt and say, yeah, okay, fine. What do you want? No, I don't want anything. I was just thinking of you. You know, very often I keep thinking of you that you have led such a long uh, life. I was just wondering, you know, before coming here, where were you working? What were you uh, uh, doing? And little bit of stimulation and the person starts off. Now, two things. One is that you have built bridges with this uh, uh, person. From the next day onwards, he's going to be comparatively at least a little more pleasant, little more warm, little more caring towards you. And equally important, as I have written on this uh, uh, thing, how you can learn a lesson from what we have learned from the other person. Don't forget uh, uh, that. Whatever you may say, people who have lived a full life earlier, we do have something or the other to learn from uh, them. If only we are willing to pick and choose. I agree that there are certain things which are outdated and which they will just uh, ramble about or which they will say which you don't really agree uh, um, with. Okay. So what I was emphasizing on is look for blessings and joys only in these uh, uh, small uh, uh, things. And uh, to just take you uh, forward into this, I was recollecting uh, a real life incident which uh, happened many, many years uh, back about how people worry about the future, people want to make grandiose plans and things. I had this friend who had a small plot of land and he had asked me to help him construct, you know, a house for uh, um, him. Opposite the road was a huge, gigantic plot and a construction was going on there. When I went there to this site uh, to start this uh, work and supervise uh, over it, because this friend of mine was in government service and he was posted outside the city. So he said, I can't keep coming very regularly in between. Can you please uh, do this? I said, fine, it doesn't take much time it was nearby. So, it's, uh, so when I went there, this gentleman um, who was building the house opposite, yeah. he uh, you know, called me over and he said, what are you building over? Uh, here. So I said, this is a friend's uh, plot and we are building a house over. He said, how many floors are you going to uh, build? I said, uh, we will have two floors because he had two daughters. So he said, I want two independent dwelling units, so one on the ground floor, one on the first floor. And on the second floor, he wanted to make a small barsati type of thing, you know, a two room cottage type of thing on the terrace. He said, oh, you're going to build three floors. And he stood there and looked and he said, your third uh, level floor will obstruct my view of the city. I said, OK, it will obstruct the uh, view of the city. So what can I do about it? Then you know what he said? He said, tell your friend to ask whatever price he wants for that plot. I want to buy it. I said, you've got such a huge plot. Why do you want to buy this? He said, because I don't want my view to be obstructed. I said, we've already started the construction. He's invested so much money in it. He said, cost of the pl plot plus cost of whatever he has invested plus 10% more. Tell him I will pay spot cash and I'll buy it off. I was amazed just because he had that type of wealth. To cut a long story short, he built a palatial house 
and it was to be inaugurated by no less than the chief minister of the state. He was that influential a person. And just before that, he came down with a horrible form of cancer. And within a few weeks, I saw him withering away, becoming skeleton and, you know, bones and dying a miserable death. And there was this beautiful house with the view, with this, with that, everything. Just to help you understand in today's days when we are also going through so much of bereavement, grief, losses and all that, this is all realities of uh, uh, life. Compared to uh, that, the small joys of uh, life, I don't know whether I had mentioned last year when this lockdown uh, came, what I had done was, uh, uh, you know, I pulled out from my library a, small, a book called 100 Hill Stations of the Country. And every night I used to read about one hill station. And I used to have such nice, pleasant dreams, you know, that time in some hill station somewhere. It had just three, three pages with some nice, beautiful graphic photographs of each hill station. So knowing that last year summer is out and we are not going out anywhere. I just, uh, in 100 days, I read through 100 of those uh, things. And without paying a single rupee, I managed to get a tour of all the hill stations in the country, right up to the northeast and Kashmir and everywhere I went and came back. This is just to explain to you what are the uh, you know pleasures of uh, life, the small pleasures of uh, life. Just one more, let me uh, show you so that uh, we emphasize on uh, how this on the 12th uh, day, I asked you to write a letter. I was not very sure how many of you would actually go ahead and uh, uh, do that. I was very, very happy to note that I got dozens of people giving me feedback that they actually wrote. Now, when I say letter, you ne need not necessarily take a piece of paper and pen and sit down and write. Though I would say that is ideal, nothing to substitute uh, that. But still, even if you sent a electronic message to somebody, I would consider that as a uh, letter. I would consider that as a uh, in a letter. Anything in text form which you have written, and if you notice, I said to someone who you like very much but have not kept in regular touch. This is one thing which I wanted to you know, tell you that somewhere with this uh, uh, lockdown and COVID and all that, we have lost touch with that second line of people. Most of us are in continuous touch with obviously our nearest and dearest, our immediate family members, maybe our parents if they live away from us, uh, those type of people who are the closest circle, as I would say. But that second line with whom, you know, whom we used to admire and whom we would be in touch with, whom we would meet and sit and have a cup of tea with, just because I cannot physically go over to his house and sit and have a cup of tea with him or invite him to my house doesn't mean that I should totally cut off. That's what we have done in many uh, cases. So please become aware. Those of you who have done it, please make it into a um, habit. Now, when I say habit, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, vague research which was done that habits take roughly three weeks to form. I don't know who did it, so please don't quote me. I don't know the authenticity of that uh, research, but they do say that it takes three weeks for a habit to be formed. So I thought of that and I said, considering the fact that we may not, all of us may not do all 30 on a regular basis, plus the fact that there should be a little bit of a uh, buffer what we did was that we made it into 30 days. So I am hoping that this 30-day uh, activity which was given, which either you have done or I exhort you to please do it now. It's not too uh, late. 
if you want once this lockdown is lifted you can pick up copies of this vsl we sell it for i think 20 rupees if i'm not mistaken and the kannada version we sell it much cheaper uh, than that i think 5 rupees or something just to the idea is it doesn't even cover the cost of our printing but we want you know the rural people the semi literate people people coming from vernacular background they should also stand to benefit what they lose out just because they don't know english so if you can do that uh, you will be assured that this 30 days will make it a habit and from there onwards you will be able to uh, you know get in it becomes natural and you keep doing it every uh, now and then no with that i thought uh, what a nice hot cup of tea by adil can i enjoy that for 2 minutes and i will hand you over to seema yes ali enjoy your tea in the meantime i thought i'll tell you about some of the happenings here some of the things that we are doing uh, in banjara yes the diploma in counseling skills uh, all of us have experienced it Uh, it's a lovely program, one year part time uh, program, and uh, this is both for uh, self growth and development as, as well as uh, you know to take to help others. If you want to take it up professionally or if you want to do volunteering work, see many of us want to do it. We want to reach out. We also do it with our intuition, our experience, our gut feel. But if you want to know in a very step by step way, uh, you know, in a very scientific and organized way, how to go about, uh, you know, helping out another person who's emotionally down and out, this is one wonderful program. It's part time. It doesn't come in the way of your work, even if you're a working professional or you are a, a stay home mom or a corporate dad, whatever it is. This really is a program which is, and you know, in the past we've had. Uh, in fact the current uh, team which was just passed out we have doctors we have uh, you know lawyers we have homemakers we have people who want to change their career path we have people who students who want to start off on their career path so you know it's a it's a lovely mix of uh, people in the classroom uh, at the same time lot of sharing lot of learning and all to do with understanding human behavior so if you want more details please reach out to us and uh, we'll be very glad to take you in fact come and meet us also in office once this uh, lockdown gets lifted and uh, yes another program we thought summer time usually we have uh, the youngs program which is meant for uh, children and adolescents above 9 years uh, of age this is again another program which is very popular with the uh, uh, you know uh, youngsters uh, because this will focus on life skills very very important uh, for uh, you know Uh, uh, living a, a very content uh, uh, life. So, if you want your children and adolescents to um, understand what are these ten life skills uh, recommended by WHO, and many other topics are covered. Uh, my colleague uh, Mira, who does a lot of good work with children, uh, she will uh, you know be able to explain you the program. Her number is mentioned here, and we'll also put it uh, again in, uh, in the uh, you know chat box. So please contact Mira. This is again an excellent program to uh, you know help children uh, to become uh, more responsible adults, right? So. these are uh, two of the things and uh, of course uh, in banjara you know it's a counseling center and uh, you know it's a absolutely free counseling both if you uh, you know want uh, some sort of career uh, uh, counseling for not only for you know adolescents in 9th and 10th grade but also you know as an adult if you're not happy with the where you are what you are doing you feel no this is not where my heart uh, belongs to i want to do something else i want to do something worthwhile please come and uh, you know have a chat with us uh, counseling is absolutely free here both career and emotional and when i say emotional it is for children adolescent youngsters elderly everybody anybody can come it's going to be absolutely confidential one on one uh, counseling uh, sessions and we have a wonderful uh, team of counselors trained counselors uh, who will be uh, you know uh, glad to help you with any sort of a thing another thing i thought when i am talking about elderly we are coming uh, up with a webinar uh, on 4th of june that is for uh, you know uh, 60 plus and 
also for people who want to you know help uh, you know uh, people who are in that age category to uh, enjoy life uh, it's called life begins at 60 so that's a webinar we are going to be having uh, on uh, for the june so if you are interested please uh, let us know we'll give you more details so these are some of the happenings here uh, for children for adolescents for young adults elderly everybody so uh, this is what we are doing in panara at the moment feel free to reach out yes is counseling available online platform yes 100% because we have no choice no that because of the lockdown so we are doing it over phone we have a number of uh, uh, our counselors who have offered their services so they are they are available on phone and we are also offering it through email and various other uh, online platforms so please feel free to get in touch with us and uh, as uh, sima just now mentioned it is free of cost isn't it uh, unni yes in fact uh, in case you know you want our counselors on some day when we are uh, you know out of office hours a list of counselors is put on the uh, website so whichever name you think immediately you know appeals to you you can please go ahead call them up or leave a message and they will you know you could uh, touch base with them so we are ready for more questions uh yeah. why 30 days why yeah. why 30 days i didn't see that huh. no no i'm so, telling that ask okay. ask as many questions no, why uh, only 30 I days just wanted to <laughs> respond to innumerable people who have said good morning i uh, instead of uh, taking names and going on saying good morning x good morning y good morning z can i give you all a very collective warm good morning it is such a pleasure to see you you know in the chat box and to know that you are there as i was just mentioning to you the significance of reaching out beyond your immediate circle so if you have had a teacher if you have had a neighbor even if you have had an old maid servant who you know is no longer working for you but you have a number anybody like that please do start reaching out because this pandemic is has isolated us further i have mentioned to you that we are heading more and more towards loneliness the pandemic and the lockdown has contributed greatly towards it as of now we are not even sure whether it will be lifted very soon or whether it will be extended so please hope for the best but prepare for the worst ensure that even if we are not allowed to or not able to go out meet people interact with them the way we used to do it earlier the least we can do is be in touch thankfully this pandemic has come at a time when you know technology has made communication so easy that we can be in touch on a day to day basis with people from anywhere in the world and many a time it has happened that when we have reached out and we are doing this on a continuous basis our entire team banjara because of uh, the fact that we are locked down is spending a lot of time talking calling up and talking to our old friends acquaintances old students helping hand volunteers purnit will share with you yeah in fact i just wanted to uh, share that um, we have a wonderful uh, fleet I, i could say like an army of um, helping hand uh, volunteers these volunteers have been offering their uh, services at um, different hospitals so now because they're not able to really go there due to this pandemic situation they're all at home and but they're very like egging to uh, go and a little disappointed also that they're not able to offer their voluntary services so what we did was as just as a small gesture from our end um we have around 450 odd volunteers so what we thought is we went to the post office and got postcards they are just a 50 paise small postcards but then we hand wrote every postcard and we have sent it to our volunteers personally signed by us and we have been getting such overwhelming response so going to say that it's not essential that uh, one has to spend a lot of money or you know 
put in a lot of cost small small simple simple gestures really go to uh, go a long way to do a lot of things um ali there's a question surekha says that how can someone hostile be accepted yes firstly as i keep reminding you uh, it depends on your relationship with that person if it is somebody whom uh, who you know is generally um, you know somebody whom you can avoid or somebody whom you can minimize your interaction with then once you know that this person is hostile i think the ideal thing to do is to minimize your interaction so that automatically you minimize the effect that it has on you on the other hand if it it's a person who is very close to you first make those efforts as i keep reminding you when the person is hostile the worst thing that you can do is to point out his hostility and say you are short tempered you are rude you are this you are that instead of that take it upon yourself and tell the person i feel hurt i feel let down i feel very depressed when these things happen uh, to me and try it out if in the worst case or after all your efforts have failed then remember that you do not have to accept the person you only have to tolerate that person build as many emotional walls as possible make sure that you have other positive and happy and pleasant people around you to counterbalance the hostility of this person and while physically you have to be there and you have to accept that you remind yourself that i'm only tolerating uh, it lata is asking how are you feeling yes lata thanks for inquiring i'm feeling very fine and uh, and as says when i and you changes to we tremendous difference can be observed in any relationship just helping issues and putting them in each other's perspective does make a whole lot of difference automatically 100% right and as please try out these uh, 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 things yes i know uh, hema manli say yeah if i could read uh, out hema manli Ali, she says right. that I noticed that children are forming a cocoon and withdrawing themselves. In fact, I think that has been a major, major concern for us this right from the lockdown. And I think I can say that though now Ali has uh, his voice is little softer, but he has been shouting from rooftop that it's uh, somehow we youngsters, uh, young adults, and you know we keep ourselves busy doing something, but children and the elderly are the ones who really, really seem to be you know lot affected. and uh, uh, just to add one more thing which you know uh, seema was mentioning that as our small humble contribution towards this whole thing what we have done is we have come out with a life skills development camp for the uh, little ones so that you know it is a path to develop them emotionally to develop them socially at the individual uh, level uh, their self esteem important relationships genuine friends self respect these are all the different topics which we are planning to cover through that and for the elderly uh, our hum again our humble contribution is life begins at 60 are you sure it begins at 60 i think life begins at 18 now <laughs> 18 now <laughs> yeah so for all those who yeah. actually want to help their elders you know have a nice systematic but at the same time fun loving face the sunset year as well you could also join in Ali Amit Patel yes, says that, so that the elderly who stay by themselves have gone into total isolation. Mm -hmm. I am getting many, many, many such instances where their children uh, apparently seem to think that it is better to protect them. I know of children who are not even visiting their parents who live nearby, saying that I don't want to carry COVID uh, to them. I feel there are always ways and means of protecting them physically, but being closer to them. Uh, emotionally so the point that sonia has brought out is very very relevant that we need to reach out to these people they are you know people and similarly what amit also said you know connect, connect to people who are infected and yeah. who are in uh, isolation these are the two categories i feel who must be really going through tremendous amount of feeling of loneliness feeling of being you know kept away from others whatever is happening to them at the physical level is there and doctors are taking care of whatever has to be taken care of but at the emotional level there is a lot that we can uh, do 
all you have to do is to go on and on working on them. No, just to my, my, tell them that if I'm intruding, please tell me, then I won't call too often or I won't message you. But if you are okay with it, I would like to be in touch. It is my need to be in uh, touch. Anu is asking that, uh, do you have any program for uh, uh, handling teens? Yes, we have just started that. Today is going to be our first major uh, class. Every Saturday, we are having this uh, online program from 2 to 4, which is called Certificate in Child and Adolescent Development. It's a 16-week uh, uh, program. The details will be available if any one of you wants. You better uh, join now because next week we will be closing the uh, admissions and we won't be taking in more uh, uh, people. Okay. Uh, Purni, Vinita has a question for you. Yeah, how do we cope with few relationships uh, who are there which we can't ignore and in spite of our best intentions, which we mostly, uh, they keep saying, you don't know what I have been uh, through. Yes. Uh, Ali, I think this would be a little a little similar to the earlier one that uh, if uh, there is going to be constant uh, criticism by this person and not uh, valuing, you know, what possibly you are doing uh, or mentioning to this uh, person, then uh, possibly a little bit of, you know, lesser interaction uh, could help. And if you can't reduce the interaction, possibly, you know, just insulating yourself, as we call it, right, making a fort uh, around you so that you don't feel as much hurt with the comments which keep coming in all the time. So just be a little aware that um, whenever this person makes a comment, oh, you don't know about it, you are not doing enough, or, you know, uh, I don't think you, you don't know what I've gone through. Maybe you could even tell that person that if the relationship is more important, that's the call you have to take. Tell that, yes, maybe I'm not able to understand what you have gone through. Do you want to just explain to me? I would want to keep time aside and listen out to you so that if I can make amends to better this relationship, maybe we can try doing that. Just check if that helps you. I think we'll be more than happy for uh, you. And uh, while we are uh, waiting for a few more questions to come in, there was something which, you know, I was a little keen to also share with you when we were talking of the day nine uh, of our uh, 30 days where we say that, you know, go and meet an elderly person and preferably, you know, not too known or who doesn't much uh, is a little uh, aloof or not too uh, pleasant or something like that. I was reading the other day where, uh, you know, the author says that it's a very good idea to be with uh, the elderly because in this fast uh, uh, life as we, for what the speed is required, we really don't know. But in this fast life, you know, where everyone is out to uh, run a race, um, it's uh, it's a very nice feeling actually when you are with some elderly, they help you to slow down. And mind you, these elderly are also people. It's not that they have had a very hunky dory, hoity toity life. Each one of them would have gone there through their own grind. You know, they may have faced tsunamis, they may have faced wars. There might be so many elderly who have faced the, you know, independence uh, uh, wars and all that has happened. They have faced earthquakes, their own calamities, their own personal life. They may have seen so many, you know, uh, different uh, traumas and situations. And each one of them can be so much of a learning for us because especially during this COVID time, which seems to have shaken up millions and millions of uh, people. So if we are able to be in touch with them, we will, you know, understand that, yes, this too shall pass. And I can try and manage my life better. Ashwini says, happy to share. Congratulations, you. Ash. <laughs> Your mother-in-law's 93rd birthday. And birthdays, of course, come every year and people do celebrate. But what I really appreciate what you and the family members did was to give her a Lifetime Achievement Award. See, lifetime achievements need not be in the public domain. They need not be in society and in politics and outdoors. They can be within the family. And I know of innumerable people who have been great motivators, like Ash says. You know, they have motivated the younger people. They have been role models. They have been those strong pillars which made the others think that, yes, there is something deeper in meaning to life. They have been the people who, like uh, Purni was just now saying, you know, helped us to slow down and look at the larger uh, picture. 
I know of so many people. I just wanted to share one uh, person who has always remained in my uh, memory, who uh, used to tell me that uh, you will never forget my age because whatever year it is, that is my age. I had met him in the year 1991. He was born in the year 1900. So he says, whichever year it is, that is my uh, age. And he never bothered about anything. In a lighter uh, vein, we, you know, he used to come out with such a wonderful statement. He used to say, when I became 60, they said, you are a senior citizen. You have to be careful. You have to slow down. When I became 70, people said, oh, you are very old. Now you have to be much more careful. You have to get regular checkups done, go to the doctor every time. And the doctor would do a lot of checkups and give me a lot of instructions and say, you are very old now. You better be careful. And then when I became 80, the doctors, when I would go for a checkup, they would say, oh, you're still alive. OK, come, come. Let me see what all is functioning in you and what is not functioning and what is not likely to function very soon. And I used to get all those type of responses from my doctors. Then he said, by the time I turned 90, all my doctors died. And today I'm free to do whatever I want. I enjoy life to its utmost. And it is a fact, let me tell you, this gentleman to his last day was so positive, so enthusiastic that he really enjoyed life. And that I want to tell you in the context of the point which Padmavati has brought up, a very serious thing that there is no proper closure when you lose someone to COVID. We don't even get to see their face. The grief in such circumstances is tough to manage. Please share your thoughts on coping with such grief. See, what we need to do is to supplement it. So you pull out old photographs. You pull out letters. You pull out you know, knickknacks and mementos. You sit down and even talk within the family about you know, incidents and anecdotes about this uh, person that, you know, so many years back, this is what we went through. So many years ago, this is what happened uh, with certain such uh, um, a person. Relive the life. Somehow, I am a very strong believer that when you lose somebody who is very, very dear uh, to you, I personally, you may say that I am morbid or whatever it is, but I personally believe in celebrating his or her life rather than mourning his or her death. Death is inevitable. Every one of your loved ones is going to go one after another. Many of them will go before you. Many of them who are much older than you will, by you know, sequence and logic, they will go before you. Once in a while, you will also come across somebody who is younger than you and who will leave this world before uh, you COVID or no COVID. And when you know that death is inevitable, firstly, make the most of what that person is there for you. And secondly, as and when that person passes away, by whatever cause of uh, uh, death, go back to celebrating and cherishing that person's uh, life. There is so much to recall. You go talk to the younger people and tell them what your experiences with that person uh, was, what made you happy about that person. I will always recollect, I have attended so many, you know, death and memorial services. There's this wonderful friend of mine called Mr. Vincent. When he passed away, his family members organized a tea party and they put up on display in the hall all the knickknacks of his. They even played a video of uh, him from his early days, two, three different videos. They pointed out things that he uh, uh, liked. All these things. And while each of the family members was breaking down and crying, they were also smiling. Somebody picked up the guitar and sang his favorite uh, uh, song. Somebody did something else. And we had such a wonderful time remembering Vincent rather than you know, sitting and crying and mourning. Okay. So not says the discussion on grief and death last time was so positive for me. Points you shared kept coming uh, to me throughout the week. I realized I was celebrating my dad's death in an unknown way 
I started my day listening to his old favorite songs, paying attention to lyrics and music. It makes me smile. Uh, makes me smile. He gifted me with a passion for good music. See, this is what I meant. It may be small things like this legacy that your dad has left behind. Maybe you never understood the significance of retro music because you felt that it is one generation away. But today, when you sit down in his absence and listen to the same songs which he used to enjoy and pay a little attention to the uh, you know, uh, lyrics, you will realize the significance of what he had uh, done and why he had done. And not only those songs and those things become uh, uh, enjoyable uh, uh, to you, but also, like I said, it is a legacy. Oh, these are the things that he has left behind. For uh, the more you keep exploring, the more you will find such wonderful things which come from the uh, past. But again, I come back to one more thing. Please remember, for every one such parent or elderly person or whoever you have lost, let me assure you, there are 10 more around you who are very much alive as of today. If they are very old, you don't know by the normal cycle of things. A person is already 80, 90 years of age, obviously cannot have a very long lifespan ahead of him or her. So this is the time to make the best of their availability to us. I started off by telling you that we reach out to the elderly watchman who is probably sitting at the gate. He also must be in mo most likely 60 plus. Going from there to any other person, I see hawkers on the road who are very elderly um, people. I see shopkeepers. I see some auto rickshaw drivers. I see so many people. And of course, as I said, the most important people, please make a list right now of the people who are important to you, who are your beloved and who are much older than uh, uh, you. Cherish uh, them, connect to them in whatever different ways that you uh, can and see how you, know, you can make the best of their availability to you as of today. And while doing that, I would also like to tell you to please mentally prepare yourself for the fact that they are not going to be there always. The day may come when you will have to say goodbye to them. So somewhere along the line, this COVID has also taught us a lesson that suddenly out of the blue, we may lose somebody like that. And much worse, like Sunur said, we may lose them in such a horrifying way that we may not even be able to have one last glimpse at their face when we are saying goodbye to uh, them. Taking all these things into account, let us do our little bit, whatever we can uh, do. And I pass you on to Kurni to close the session. Thank you uh, so much, Ali. Uh, yes, uh, been excellent you know, to be uh, with you uh, week on uh, week and uh, uh, you know we actually sit down and we uh, decide what topics have already happened and what we should speak on what could be the need of the hour there is a lot of mulling which uh, goes over all these topics and uh, even if uh, you think that you have some topics which you think could be of you know use for anyone please uh, put it up on the chat box we'll make a note of it and you know appropriately we'll uh, get them in also so uh, it doesn't mean that if you have already planned something, we can't slate this in. We would want to uh, do that. So the last possibly 30 seconds, you can quickly let us know if you have any topics which you would want specifically. We'll be more than happy to slate them in. But uh, otherwise, we wish you a very, very happy weekend from Team Banjara. We wish that you be you're safe and you be well. Thank you so much.